This is Karen Kuniyuki with the Emanuel School of Fine Arts. Today we have a science experiment and we're going to talk about Rube Goldberg. Rube Goldberg was born in San Francisco on the 4th of July in 1883. He graduated from the University of California at Berkeley with a degree in engineering. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist often referred to as the father of invention for his series of comics depicting what we now call Rube Goldberg machines. These were complicated, deliberately over-engineered contraptions that ultimately perform a very simple task. These machines are designed so that one step triggers the next in a chain reaction until the final task is complete. For this experiment, you want to start at the end. Identify the simple task that you want to achieve. You might turn off a light, open a door, pour a bowl of cereal, turn off an alarm clock, hammer a nail, or pop a balloon. Be creative and unique with your idea. Next, make a plan. Brainstorm a series of actions that will complete your task. Make a pin pop a balloon, send a toy car down a ramp, make dominoes fall. Draw out your blueprint plan for what you expect to happen. The most important action will be the first step. That's where you start your entire machine. So make sure your machine starts with a bang. Now Rube Goldberg, he was a cartoonist and he would draw these machines. He probably drew more machines than he actually built. So if you're inspired, maybe today's activity would be drawing your machine and not actually building it. That's entirely up to you. Next, you're going to gather your materials. You can use almost anything to create a Rube Goldberg machine. Here are some ideas. Dominoes, fans, PVC pipe, magnets, duct tape, marbles, cups or bowls, miniature toy cars, paper towel tubes, string. For my example, I built my entire machine out of Lego. As you create your machine, follow your, your blueprint and place your materials where you think they need to be. Practice makes perfect, so don't expect your Rube Goldberg machine to work perfectly the first time you try it. There will be plenty of trial and error. This is science. Scientists and experiments and um, people who create new things, they never get it right the first time, and that's okay. Adjust your materials and keep at it. First off, let's watch a slow motion video of my short Rube Goldberg machine that ends with a satisfying slide of dominoes. Then I'll describe to you a few of the basic principles you might choose to include in your machine. A large marble will begin on one side of a lever that pivots on a fulcrum, like a teeter-totter. When weight is released from the heavier side of the lever, it tilts toward the marble and releases the marble into a series of inclined planes. Here, the marble changes speed based on the steepness of the ramp, and it eventually tumbles into a bucket at the base of a pulley. As the bucket lowers from the weight of the marble, it dislodges an anchor that secured a pendulum. The pendulum swings on its pivot, allowing the massive bob to strike the battering ram, which in turn slides from left to right and strikes the first domino in the row, triggering the chain reaction where all the dominoes tumble against each other. There are so many laws of physics and simple machines at play here. Let's take a closer look at a few of them to get you started. A lever is a rigid bar resting on a pivot or a fulcrum. 
It's used to help move a heavy or firmly fixed load with one end when pressure is applied to the other. You could also think of this as a scale where you balance one side with the other. In this case, the whole machine is started when we lift the load, which is a block of Lego, off the lever, making the right side heavier than the left. The imbalance causes the right side to shift downward and it releases the marble into the chute. Next comes our marble run, which is made of a series of inclined planes. When something travels down an inclined plane or a slope, the speed increases. When it travels up a slope, the speed slows down. I've also made my marble change directions twice. Gravity helps my marble travel in a downward direction and my inclined planes dictate where and how fast it will travel. The white fenders on my design help keep the marble on the track because as the marble got faster, it wanted to jump off. The marble run ends in a bucket that's connected to a pulley. A pulley system makes it easier to lift an object rather than lifting the dead weight by hand. A single pulley essentially changes the direction of the pull or the force applied. The pulley has two equal arms and it operates on a fulcrum just like the lever does. Though this fulcrum is a wheel with rimmed edges on an axle and it's threaded with a piece of string. A single pulley hanging from a ceiling with a rope wrapped around its wheel allows you to lift a box off the floor up to a table or higher using half the amount of force it would take you to lift it with just your hands. In this case, the force on the right side of the pulley is holding the pendulum in place until the moment I want it released. On to our pendulum. Have you ever seen a wrecking ball in action? Or have you ridden the swings at the park? The size and weight of the wrecking ball or the person on the swing are just as important as how high the ball or the person is lifted before being released. A small wrecking ball with very little swing behind it will not do much damage. Think of a baby in a baby swing with a tiny push. Now think of a heavy wrecking ball or a fully grown adult that has been lifted high into the air before its release. This wrecking ball or swinging person has a much more powerful force behind them. Like the lever and the pulley, a pendulum also has a pivot. In this sequence, the massive bob, as it's called, is the device that will strike my battering ram. That is at the opposite end of the pendulum from the pivot. If your bob isn't heavy enough, it will not be strong enough to initiate the next phase of your machine. When the pendulum strikes the battering ram, it, the battering ram will slide a couple of inches left and right, and when it slides, the momentum from the pendulum is transferred to the dominoes. A moving object has a property that's called momentum. Momentum is a measure of mass in motion. The momentum of an object is the product of its mass and its velocity or its speed. There is a law called the conservation of momentum, which states this, for a collision occurring between object one and object two, or my pendulum bob and my battering ram, the total momentum of the two objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the two objects after the collision. The momentum lost by the object number one, the pendulum, is transferred to and now equal to the momentum gained by my battering ram. The battering ram will then transfer this energy to the dominoes. Each upright domino is also full of potential energy. And when the first domino falls, the force of gravity turns that potential energy into kinetic energy. 
The action of the domino toppling over into the next domino is the kinetic energy in action. Okay, would you like to see this one more time? Here we go. Keep in mind that it took me a whole day to build the components for this machine. It also took more than 20 tries to get everything lined up correctly and captured on video. You must be patient, and when at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. If you are interested in learning more about the science behind these machines and their actions, I have linked a number of great websites in the description of this video. I have also compiled a YouTube playlist of awesome Rube Goldberg experiments for your enjoyment. Did you know that there are annual contests for kids and professionals for building these inspiring machines? Please be sure to share with us any photos or videos that you create while you're exploring this fun activity. We would love to hear from you. This Lego robotics lesson was produced to support families educating at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you enjoyed this video, please share the Emanuel School of Fine Arts on social media to help other families interact with our content. See you next time.